Well, folks, who would have ever thought it? Tattooed Chef TTCF stock would be the one to save my butt, okay? Who would have ever thought this? We're going to go through all the numbers in regards to the Chef. I took notes as they were doing their conference call. I'm going to share those notes with you in this video as well. We're going to talk about the stock price. We're going to talk about even the short term of the stock price, where I think the stock price is going short term, okay? Obviously, it's a long-term investment for me. It's a stock I've been buying heavily for the past, um, you know, probably year, uh, but specifically the most heavy probably in the last six to nine months. And um, this is obviously a company I believe in a lot over time. And it was a huge sigh of relief to see them come through and crush the revenue expectations that were uh, essentially, uh, you know, uh, they had revenue expectations out there and they crushed it. They absolutely crushed it. So that was big because I can tell you in this market right now, so many companies have been missing revenue or barely coming in line so to see a company like the chef come in and just crush it was yes like that that's huge for me okay i will say that it's huge for confidence it's huge for everything so a lot to get in this video guys hope you enjoyed it, as always if you want to check out ftx us and sign up for ftx us check out the first link in the description down there fees that are up to 85 percent lower than competitors also get up to a hundred dollars in free crypto when you place your first trades through the app and uh, also use referral code holy smokers on there already so in regards to the chef, so let's imagine for a, a moment here, we're a business, right? And let's say we have this business that's doing $60 million in revenue. And over the next five to six years, we're going to grow into a business that's going to do $600 million, right? Well, the first thing I would think is, okay, we need to start getting this business so we can scale to $600 million, right? If you know anything about business, you know you got to get your business to a place where you can scale, right? So you're going to need to add a lot of employees. You're going to need to add a lot of executives, right? Because 60 mil to 600 mil is a pretty big number. You're going to need to add warehouses. You're going to need to add production facilities, all those sorts of things, right? Because you're scaling your business and you're getting out ahead of that, right? Now, in the short term, it hurts margins. It hurts profitability. It hurts pretty much everything, especially when you're in a high inflation environment, right? But the thing you got to understand is like, as your revenue grows and grows closer to 600, your business gets exponentially more profitable as you scale revenue, right? You have to scale employees, warehouses, production, all that stuff prior to that period, right? Otherwise, you're never going to be able to scale to 600 mil. It's not the way it works. You have to get out in front of that. So it hurts your profitability short term. It hurts everything short term as far as your bottom line numbers. But long term, obviously, as your business gets closer and closer to that much bigger number, the the, the, the how much revenue makes it down to the bottom line is a huge amount more than, than previously it was, okay? So it's very, very important. I just wanted to because that's essentially the chef. If you're wondering what's this example of, it's a chef. The chef a couple years ago was doing $60 million in revenue. And uh, here within the next two to three years, they're expected to do $600 million plus. And they've had to add a lot of employees, executives, warehouses, production, all those sorts of things to get themselves in that place. It hurts profitability in the short term. But dude, when you got this sort of opportunity, you're going after that opportunity. You got to get out in front of that. Okay. Now, in regards to the numbers here, the revenue grew 37%. Okay. Now, here's why this is so massive. The revenue growth expectation was 22%, okay? So to beat by 15 percentage points is insane. Like, you know, I thought they would beat, okay? But I did not think they would beat that much. This blew away my numbers. And I'm somebody that's an ultra bull on, on the chef, okay? So when a company comes in and crushes my personal expectations for that company, it's a huge moment, okay? When you can crush a bull like myself's expectations, that's a huge, huge moment. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. And let's be quite honest, in the short term, that's the only thing that matters for the chef right now in the short term is revenue, right? The rest of it is going to matter a lot more down the road. But for this year, it's all about getting the brand more known, getting those revenues up, expanding into all the retailers, things like that. In 23 and after, margins become much more important. The net income becomes much more important. But this year, it's all about revenue. So the fact that they come in and just crush it was massive. Okay, Tattoo Chef branded product revenue uh, increased to 21.2% or increased 21.2%, 60% of total revenue. Adjusted EBITDA came in at 13.4 million negative. Net loss was 17 point six million branded SKUs rose to ninety from seventy eight so the companies kept keeping the pedal to the metal they added more than ten thousand new points of distribution they commenced production of frozen ready to eat Mexican foods now the, the important thing to remember when we're talking about the the you know TDCF getting into new stores and new points of distribution is a lot of times when they first get a new store or something like that um, they might only come in with two or three items but what we're finding is over time that two to three items grows to four to six 
items, from six to six to eight items, to 10 items, to 12 items, to 15 items, so on and so forth. And the company just keeps growing, growing, growing. So that becomes just absolutely massive, right? And so that's very, very important to remember there. Like for instance, Target's a great example of this. Target started with like two items for the chef. And now you go into a Target store, and I mean, oh my gosh, there's probably 20 plus SKUs in some of these Target stores now. And that's all in a matter of like a year, year and a half. It's been extraordinary what they, they, they've pulled off there, okay? Enterprise-wide automation initiative underway and ex- expected to be completed by the end of 22. Now with something like that, why this is big is not just so you can get more items out there, but the main reason that's big is that's going to help with the cost of the business. That will end up helping margins. That will help profitability to all folks that obviously long term, we're going to care about margins. We're going to care about profitability and to get out in front of that with automations are going to be big for this company. Okay. Branded oat butter bar is set to uh, commence production in Q2 of 2022. It's a huge product for this company long term in be a great margin generator cold storage facility operational in april 2022 which should definitely be one of those things that help once again profitability long term so the company now they, they've added all these employees, they've added production, they're adding revenue, they're adding stores, all those things like that. It seems to me, based upon the conference call and what they're talking about here, is they're going to focus much more on profitability over these next few quarters and obviously next few years, which is obviously something uh, you know that's, that's great for the long-term business because we're in this because we believe it's going to become a profit beast down the road, right? Not because we think they're going to lose money forever or something like that, right? After a record 2021, our growth continued during 2022 first quarter and we reported our highest ever quarterly revenue of $72 million. That was their highest ever, okay, said Sam Galetti, president and CEO of the company. We are continuing to scale our business, and during the first quarter, we saw increased contributions from the facilities acquired as part of the New Mexico Foods distribution deal and the Carson Tortilla Factory. Mr. Galetti continued, we are or we are advancing initiatives designed to leverage our increased manufacturing capacity and demand profile to drive efficiencies reduce costs, expand margins, and enhance our competitive profile. These include increasing our retail footprint and product count in existing retailers. That's big. That's called SKU expansion. Expanding our presence outside of the freezer aisle. That is big, okay? Freezer aisle is uh, one of the worst uh, kind of product categories for profitability. And as you can get into, you know, just regular store shelves, that that's, that's profit machine. The margins on those businesses are insane, okay? To include refrigerated and ambient products. So think of this as not refrigerated or, or freezer, okay? And integrating automation across our operations. We commenced operations at our dedicated cold storage facility in April 2022 and expect to generate significant savings this year by bringing this capability in house. I am extremely proud of our team and they continue to deliver growth and maintain the highest levels of quality and client service while navigating macroeconomic challenges, which obviously we know there's an immense amount of those going on right now. Okay. So yeah, nonetheless, as far as the financial outlook, they, they reiterated their guidance, which is huge because a lot of companies aren't even trying to give guidance right now, or they're giving bad guidance. So the fact that the company's like, no, we're, we're going to do the numbers we said we're going to do. That is huge for this company. Okay. Gross margins, obviously expected to be uh, not in a great place this year, as we have all expected the, the margins not being a great place this particular year. Marketing expenses, expected of 27 to 32 million dollars capital expenditures of approximately 20 million dollars with investments focused on automation robotics and manufacturing facilities all right now in regards to the uh the cash 57 mil accounts receivable we'll talk about that in just a moment in inventory pretty in line okay now now, on the notes from the conference call here, here's some notes I took, right? The, the, the products are now available in 16,000 stores, fastest health and wellness growing brand in categories that they compete in based upon this company named Spins that does this. Velocity is insane based upon Spins like you listen to a conference call and it's, it's hard not to be bullish. And, and this is stuff from folks like myself that walk the stores all the time. We see this all the time. We see the velocities moving. Like these products are moving. It's not like they're just sitting on short shelves. And, 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 and you know, sometimes, you know, short sellers don't ever want to acknowledge uh, you know, like like how strong this brand is already building out and how big their long-term opportunity is. But I think it's very, very important that everybody that's watching this video understands that 
stores like Target and Kroger and the best of the best retailers in the world, these companies do not just keep taking on product unless you are moving and you have that big velocity. And the chef has that big velocity, and that's why a, a store like Target goes from two SKUs to four SKUs to six SKUs to 10 to 15 to 20. That's why this happens, because you're moving product. And if you're moving product, at the end of the day, the retailer is going to take more more of your product in these stores okay sam says that they are uh, taking market share right now the company now is 315,000 square feet of manufacturing space the company is supposed to do 600 mil of revenue within two to three years sam said on an annual basis that's huge right company's very uh, focused on cost savings moving forward key new executive helping with that says sam oat butter bars coming in the second half of 22 in terms of a meaningful way we could see some of those on on store shelves before the second half of 22 but in terms of meaningful um you know back half sarah says a pizza business is very very strong and they're expanding products there they're expanding big into the mexican cuisine consistent with what we see in stores, um, you know, with the burrito products and all those sorts of things. Basically, household awareness has gone from about 11% to about 17% in the U.S. quarter over quarter, Sarah said there based upon their data. Uh, then Stephanie's line got messed up and I said, <laughs> short sellers cough, Stephanie's line pricks <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they fight dirty, fight dirty and whatnot. And then, uh, she, she got back on, I had to let her use one of my, my backup phones. And so, uh, <laughs> I won't let the shorts win. Oh boy. Uh, so company has $57 million of cash at the end of the quarter and less than $1 million in debt. So they're in a very, very strong financial position there. Uh, we were, we were talking about kind of like, uh, freight costs and those sorts of things, um, calming down in, in big Basically, sometimes those can lag a quarter or two uh, if you're in contracts and things like that already. So sometimes that lags a bit there. Um, pickup and gross margin expected in 3Q, according to Stephanie. She said that. So that's going to be phenomenal. See, that's another big thing for the stock. Uh, if you're talking about the stock price in the short term, obviously over the long term, what drives companies over the long term? Revenue growth, margin growth net income growth. Those are what drives companies over the long term, right? Short term, a lot of different things can drive companies. So the fact that the margins are expected to start expanding starting in 3Q, huge for this business model, absolutely massive. And for the stock price as well, it's absolutely massive. People want to see those margins getting better and better and better. They don't want to just see revenue growth. A lot of folks want to see margins as well, especially for folks that are maybe on the sideline when it comes to this company. They want to see those margins go up over time, right? Uh, the company talked about bars and, and chips, uh, Q3, Q4, in more of a meaningful way there. Sam said they're going to be profitable by the end of next year. He said that on the conference call. I was obviously very, very happy to hear that. Um, that's huge, you know, to be profitable by then next year. Now, uh, Stephanie's also said, you know, she's expecting the same. Uh, she said that in past conference calls in 3Q, 4Q, somewhere around there roughly, right? Um, my personal opinion, I said this is the best conference call I've been on for the chef. Lots of good news for the back half of this year, plus management seems uh, much more sure what they're saying than in the past, right? And on top of that, you come in with a huge revenue beat for this past quarter. A lot of positive vibes starting to build around the chef, okay? Absolutely, absolutely Huge, huge things there, okay? Um, I said, this is the first time I have no fear about the short-term and long-term for the chef. Long-term, I have always been confident. Short-term is shaky here and there. Even, uh, you know, short-term, excuse me, even short-term should get better and better as the year goes along, which is what management's saying there. So I would, I, as a shareholder, I'm very, very pleased between the massive beat on revenue, between uh, seeing all the, the cost initiative stuff that they have going on that's going to help this company in the back half of this year and in future years, seeing how they've scaled up the, the business to get them in this place where they're going to be able to do many hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue year in and year out, right? And then that conference call and just listening to them be much more confident than I've ever seen the chef team in the past. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a happy shareholder. Let's just put it that way. Very, very happy shareholder, okay? Uh, I, I did post this as well. I said accounts receivables up $21 million quarter over quarter. I said that Costco, Sam's Club, Target better not go bankrupt or we're screwed. Pay the chef, okay? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty steep up uprise there in uh, accounts receivable from, from 25 mil to 46 mil. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of money uh, the, the folks owe this chef, okay? Now, in regards to stock price. So in regards to after hours, you know, that's just, you know, who's, who's even in the chef. Okay. This is a stock just driven by retail and short sellers. Okay. Retail and short sellers. So short sellers can screw around after hours. Um, you know, short term, I'm even very, very confident in the chef where the stock price is going. I'm going to be a buyer of the stock. Um, I'm, 
I'm say the most optimistic I've been in the chef in a long time between not just the valuation being down, but, but also with that massive revenue beat with the back half of this year being a better, better story, not just from revenue side, but from a margin side, profitability standpoint, uh, balance sheets in a really, really good position. All those sorts of things make me feel extremely confident in this one. Short term, uh, is going to be what, what short term is going to be. You know, that's, you know, the market, all those sorts of things. I'm not actually that worried about this. And the reason I'm not worried about this is I think there's going to be a lot of folks that come back to the chef stock that maybe had sold out of this previously and are looking at it now and looking at that insane revenue beat. Like that's, that's one of the strongest revenue beats I've seen this entire earnings season, if not the strongest. Like that was incredible. Like on a percentage basis, that's ridiculous to come in with that sort of beat. So they come in with that sort of beat, right? The company, as far as the margin story, is just going to get better and better as your year goes on. But not just that. Year after year, I expect the chef to get in better and better margins. So their margins in 22, by the end of this year, will be much better than 21. And then 23 is going to be much better than 22. And 24, you know, and so on and so forth. So when I look at this sort of company in, in the food space and just growing in, into a category that's just going to get bigger and bigger over the coming years, uh, I'm very, very optimistic about the short term and the long term with the chef. And that's in regards to the business model and the stock price. And I would not be surprised at all if there's a lot of buying pressure that comes in the chef tomorrow. Like I said, I'm, I'm a happy buyer of the chef, but I think there's a, a lot of folks that are going to be looking at this one with a, a new level of respect, right? Um, you know, obviously they came in, they reported on time, all those sorts of things. They got their numbers together. I think that's big. And uh, yeah, it, you know, for a while there, they, they kept messing, you know, and when you're in your first year or two of being a public company, it's, it's tough, right? And they kept coming in with these misses, misses, misses. So to come in with an ex, an exceptional beat like that on revenue is, uh, I'm telling you, it it's beyond massive. And so um, long term, I love this stock. Short term, I love this stock. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to load up on shares and, and add ownership of this company. It's one of a few companies that um, are smaller companies that I love. I, I love the value that Amazon is right now. I love the value PayPal is right now. Even Netflix, I love the value that is. Shopify is coming so down so much. I mean, you're starting to really like that one's, uh, you know, valuation. But of the smaller companies I love, Honest, Tattooed Chef, Oatly. Those are three stocks that come to mind that I love that are smaller cap companies that I think just have sick upside over the next three to five years. And um, we'll end up, they, they'll write their own history at the end of the day when it comes to those companies. And the chef, um, you know, I don't want to say the chef's more, the chef's definitely more exciting than Honest, right? But I don't want to say the chef's necessarily more exciting than Oatly. I think both those stocks are almost equal as far as the, the um, you know, uh, I would say the excitement because both those are just growing like a weed and uh, they have just insane opportunity. So happy shareholder. I'll be a happy buyer. And uh, I'm very confident in the short term and the long term in regards to everything with the chef. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this as always. Much love. And uh, don't forget to check out FTX US, the official crypto exchange of the financial education channel and me. Uh, get up to $100 in free crypto when you place trades through FTX through my link and use a holy smoke as your referral code. First link in the description. Have a great day.